ground control to Major Tom. Space Oddity is one of those anomalies. Why was it a success? I think even to this day people throw their hands up and say, we're not quite sure. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. I think Space Oddity worked really because it was different. Um, it was David's first step really into the, the space um, strangeness. I think the track gives the listener a feeling of space, of actually being out there. Um, the lovely chords, the intro chord which goes from an E minor to an F with the major seventh on the bass, in other words an F chord with the open E string of the guitar ringing through, sets the track up perfectly. Interestingly, with Space Oddity, uh, Bowie's producer, Tony Visconti, wanted nothing whatsoever to do with the song because he thought it was a bit of a cheap cash-in on the recent Apollo moon landings. So in stepped Gus Dudgeon, Elton John's producer, who gave Bowie his first hit. Musically, what are the things you remember? Definitely the stylophone, which was played by David Bowie. The stylophone was a, a, a toy instrument, like a, a tiny keyboard that you played with... Um, with a little rod uh, with a cable on it that was just a basic uh, synthesizer, uh, a cheesy little instrument. Uh, the Mellotron, very important, Rick played by Rick Wakeman. Um, Terry Cox was the drummer. The bass player was the great session bass player Herbie Flowers who played some wonderful lines. Uh, interesting was the guitar performance which was played by one Mick Wayne. So many people think that because the Space Oddity album was uh, featured a credit to Mick Ronson uh, that it was him. In actual fact, um, it's very in the style of Mick Ronson, but it was played by Mick Wayne. It was very dour. It was talking about a tragedy in space, which of course was to happen, nearly happen, not that long after it came out. And it caused a controversy because it was banned for a while, because it was too much like life. It had that opening that's very haunting and very singular, which reminds me always of the 1950s uh, film Forbidden Planet, not in terms of what they're talking about lyrically, but in the music, very electronic, very haunting, very daunting. I think as a, as, as a drummer it was um, it was good for me because there was a lot of learning curves through that period. It, the songs weren't all like uh, say Hendrix or Zeppelin or Sabbath where you could have one sort of approach as a drummer and you knew that would sort of work and you just found in the beat because it was piano and strings and um, lighter songs, heavier songs. Bowie really understood the importance of presentation and by coming together and working with Mick Rock, they really pioneered the art of the, of the promotional video. Although the single was released in 1969, the promotional film wasn't actually shot till 1972, but with the, the technology that was available, it's, it's a really great achievement.